I'm sitting there, remember, six, seven years old, I'm sitting there, I'm just like, whoa, these girls are naked on the Megatron, holy shit. Posh Spice is sitting there doing her shit, doing her shit. Boom, popped right over the chair for a split second on the Megatron. I saw Posh's bare ass tit when I was six or seven, it fucked me up for the rest of my life. I just remember, I saw the Spice Girls boob, I'm now a grown up. Hey, what's up YouTube, Dope Aziola here. Hope you're having a dope ass day. Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is another episode of Storytime, my favorite fucking thing on the planet to do. But before I get into that, I wanna let you guys know, 9-11, this Friday, this Friday, the second this video's over, the second, you know, the, the end screen plays and it's over, go to pushtrees.com. We have a huge, the biggest drop I have ever done. I have never ordered this many shirts. We've never done this many designs. I haven't printed this shirt since 2014, guys. I love it. It's one of my favorite fucking shirts. One of my, my favorite movie ever, Forrest Gump. This is the Bubba Kush tee. So we got 12 shirts, two glass rolling trays, guys. Glass rolling trays, we've never had that before. Then we have two dab mats coming out. I got a, a few more bongs and a few more paintings. Just to let you guys know, first come first serve on that. The bongs are so fucking limited. Only a few people are gonna get them. But starting in October, all new colors, all new bongs. So yeah, before this video starts, I just wanna let you guys know, pushtrees.com, 9-11, this Friday, the second this video is over, push trees drop, thanks for supporting. Okay, let's get into this video, guys. This story time, Concerts and if you're anything like me, you've probably been to a hundred fucking shows I've been to so many shows. I wrote them all down I know I missed some and I'm not talking about backyard parties. I'm not talking about the fair I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about going to the show. I got tickets. We got tickets We go to the show by the way guys I rolled a five gram joint and I have the bomb because this story time is gonna be long as fuck While I'm lighting this up guys look up here. See that link. We just bought a fucking AMG Rosie and I just bought a 2020 c63. I'm so fucking happy. Thank you guys for making it possible if you want to see the whole process the whole video click that link right there before I get into these concerts I got to tell you what kind of music I love so growing up I was a very backward ass kid the only things I fucking loved as a kid were oldies and doo-wop my first CD I ever got on my sixth birthday was let it be by the Beatles I only cared about classic music I didn't listen to rap till I was 13 years old the only rap I ever heard when I was a little kid was Tupac because that's when Tupac and Biggie had that feud and my mom was a Tupac fan but growing up I heard a lot of ODB a lot of Method Man my mom loves that shit she loves old school fucking hip-hop her main thing is classic rock and like 80s music so growing up with my mom all of her was like Duran Duran Led Zeppelin Pink Floyd stuff like that so that's where I got my love for classic rock and 80s like Devo shit over here my dad music influence nothing because he was not there <laughs> sorry I had to say that shit and then all my doo-wop classic James Brown all that all that little Anthony and Imperials, that's all my grandpa. Me and my grandpa listen to doo-wop box tapes all the time. So going into sixth grade, I remember at assembly, people were like, I like Tony, Tony, Tony. I like Tony Braxton. I like Dr. Dre. Like, I like the Beatles White Album. And everybody looking at me, and I'm from the ghetto, and I'm brown, I don't speak Spanish, and I like the Beatles only. I was a fucking outcast as a kid, guys. So this brings us up to the very first concert I ever saw in my life, and guys are going to be very surprised on my first show. My first concert I ever went to in my entire existence of being alive, the Spice Girls. And I'm not fucking kidding. I was in love with the fucking Spice Girls. Now I know as a kid, oh, I just like the way they look. I was just I was just like ogling girls as a kid. That's really what it was. Oh, they're great. I watched the movie with my sister all the time. She loved the Spice Girls. Turns out my sister's fucking gay. So we were both just staring at girls as a kid, I guess. It fucked us up. Here it goes, guys. We hear the Spice Girls are coming to California. My Aunt Pepper, she's about 10 years older than me. She took me and my sister. She surprises and goes, hey, we're going to the Spice Girls concert. Go get the fuck out of here. Yeah, right. Sure enough, she's driving us all the way to LA to go see the fucking Spice Girls. So there I am, little kid waiting for the Spice Girls to come on, fucking sitting there on the lawn. And guys, this concert fucked me up. They, you know, they're, they're performing a whole concert, you know, superstar. So we're in the back on the lawn. We just see them on fucking Megatron screens and shit. They're doing a song called Naked. In this song, the performance, the shit opens up and it shows them sitting on like wooden chairs backward. So, you know, like they're sitting with the uh, back on their chest and they look completely naked. 
they're singing a song called Naked. So each of them is singing their song, right? And they're like doing this and everyone's like, oh my God, are they really fucking naked? This is crazy. You just see bare shoulders, bare thighs, but you don't see the front. These bitches were fucking naked. I'm sitting there, remember, six, seven years old. I'm sitting there, I'm just like, whoa, these girls are naked on the Megatron, holy shit. Posh Spice is sitting there doing her shit, doing her shit. Boob popped right over the chair for a split second on the Megatron. You saw Posh's boob and nipple, bloop, and she tucked it right back and kept singing. And you could tell her face like, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck. I saw Posh's bare ass tit when I was six or seven. It fucked me up for the rest of my life. I just remember, I saw the Spice Girls boob. I'm now a grown up. And that guys was my very first concert. Here we go guys, second concert ever. There's a place in Merced called the Strawberry Alarm Clock. It's like a head shop slash record shop, but it used to be called the Fatty Mocha, a bar or some shit, but they used to have uh, bands come there and play. You know, a small town band venue. I don't know how, but they let me in. I was about six or seven. My Aunt Pepper, her friend's name is RC. He owns the place. My mom's there, so they know everybody there. They're all having friends. Oh, here's my kid. I got deathly sick. I don't know what happened. As soon as we got into the bar to watch the concert, I got sick. They were still smoking cigarettes. I was a hot box of cigarettes. I remember I started almost throwing up. I had my head down on the table. Coming to think of it, my mom's a fucking dickhead. Bring in a little child while he's about to throw up around cigarette smoke. Like, no, 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 we're gonna watch the show. Fuck you, fuck you mom, that was some bullshit. But who was playing the show? Papa Roach, before they ever got famous. They came to Merced. Corn used to come to Merced before they ever got popping. That's the second concert I ever saw, first rock concert I ever saw, and I remember thinking, oh, this is cool, this is sick. <laughs> so, my third show, and this is like, I think it was sixth grade, it was when, you know, MTV premieres, world premiere, TRL was out, so bands really fucking mattered, you know what I mean? When you go to school, did you see the new video? Of course I saw the new video, bitch, you know I saw that shit. That's how it was. So, this is when Papa Roach got real famous, right? And then they got Last Resort just came out and they were fucking huge. So again, Maya Pepper, she really came through for us, man. Her friend RC obviously knows those guys. He got us tickets to the Palladium, I think, the place in Modesto, the big spot. So I'm telling all my friends all week, I'm going to see Papa Roach and this new band called Lincoln Park. I don't know who they are, but Lincoln Park and Head P.E. So my Aunt Pepper takes us. I remember parking. I remember where we parked, where we had to walk to get there. I remember waiting in line, just like, oh my God, oh my God. We walk in, hell of people, and the Head P.E. band, that fool's fucking screaming on stage. Then Lincoln Park comes on and this guy starts rapping and shit and this fool with red hair, obviously, Lincoln Park. I didn't know who they were. I just remember thinking, damn, that motherfucker could sing his ass off. Papa Roach comes on stage with my aunt, my sister, and I'm losing of my shit like oh my god and the concert's ending you know concert's ending you expect let's leave my aunt says stay right here stay right here and i'm like no security's telling everybody to leave we need to leave you know as a kid you're like no let's abide by the rules let's get the fuck out of here they say the concert's over lights are on let's go what's going on we wait for fucking 10 more minutes and everybody in every band starts coming out and i'm just like <sighs> I didn't know. My aunt surprised us. We got to meet everybody. I have pictures. I will pop them up on the screen. I got to meet everyone, guys. We were the only two people left that weren't in the band. You know what I mean? My Aunt Pepper, her friend, and two little kids showed everybody for weeks. Like, yeah, look at this picture. I'm not lying, motherfucker. I, yo, one of the coolest moments of my fucking life. I didn't realize how many times my Aunt Pepper has came through. This is concert number four. I fucking love Blink-182. Love Blink-182. I fucking... I love Green Day. I, I liked Jimmy Eat World when I was a kid. I liked all those bands, All American Rejects when I was younger. That shit was tight. Anyway, we get there guys and me and my Aunt Pepper and my sister Shireen are in line and I can hear Jimmy Eat World start playing. We got there late and I can hear them playing in line. You know, one of the worst feelings ever, dude, is when you roll a joint, you go to the bathroom and it's already halfway gone. You're like, bros, you guys couldn't wait for me? That feeling and sitting in line while you hear a band play that you came to see. Two worst fucking feelings ever. So I'm just losing my shit like, oh my God, we're missing the first band. Are you fucking kidding me? 45 minutes later, we get in, Green Day just started. Green Day's going, there's so many fucking people at this concert, it was a wave of people. Then Blink-182 comes on and I mean, they fucking crushed it. All I remember of the concert is just completely staring straight, watching these dudes for hours and then we drove all the way the fuck back home. Okay guys, fifth concert. This is when I started growing up. No more, I have to go with my parents or I have to go with the family member. Now, me and my homies were about to go to a show. My friend had his license. I was 
14 or 15, he had his license, he was gonna drive us to Santa Cruz to the Catalyst. A lot of you know this already, but one of my favorite rappers ever is Andre Nicotina. If you don't know who Andre Nicotina is, you're fucking welcome now. Go listen to the motherfucker, he's hard as hell, been a fan since I was a kid. We're going to the Catalyst Santa Cruz because he always plays there, bro, but I've never been. When you listen to underground rap, I didn't listen to mainstream rap at all, I was still listening to underground, so you hear underground artists, there's not music videos. You know what I'm saying? They don't have a lot of pictures of them on the internet like that back then. So I didn't really like know what the motherfucker looked like all the way. You know, like other rappers I like, I don't know what they look like. So all week we're all talking about it. I got my ticket, I got my ticket. So four or five of my friends are gonna go see Andre Nicotina. I am so fucking excited. So we get there, we park, and you know what it's like being younger and like, all right, everybody put it on parking. Everybody put it on gas. All right, what are we gonna go eat? Well, I only have 10 bucks. You know what I mean? It was one of those times, like I got a ticket and we got some weed. It's all the fuck we need, man. Who's gonna sneak the weed in? Who's gonna sneak it? It, it was at that time, like little kid shit. It's like a concert, we're all waiting in line. And I see this white dude, this white dude with super slick back hair and a full Adidas jumpsuit. I mean like top to bottom Adidas, look dope as fuck, like some run DMC shit. I'm like, damn, white dude looks fucking tight. We're right at the front, so we're by the ticket booth. We're just waiting, waiting to get into the long ass security line. The white dude walks up to the ticket booth and goes, hey, can you tell Andre that I'm here? So the opener comes out and it's Smoothie. They say Smoothie. I'm like, what? Smoothie's opening? I love him. He's a fucking rapper. I, I think he's the shit. I'm like, no fucking way, he's coming? I don't even know what he looks like. I don't have his fucking album disc. We just downloaded on LimeWire at that point. And this guy starts like electric sliding onto stage and it's the white dude from the front in the full Adidas jumpsuit. I didn't know Smoothie was white. This motherfucker comes on stage and murders it, dances his ass off. Fast forward real quick, 10 years later, that's my homie now. Smoothie, what's up? We know each other now. When I was a kid, I lost my shit first seeing him. And now it's like, hey, what's up? You trying to chill? It's such a weird fucking feeling as the time goes by when the people you look up to become your friends. It's such a fucking weird feeling. Anyway, the concert goes great. Fucking sick, Andre Gatina and Equipto are on stage. They're fucking murdering it. We go outside and who's there? If you don't know who Equipto is, you're welcome again. Go look him up. Equipto standing outside smoking a blunt. Me and my four homies are losing our minds. You, you know what I'm saying? When you see the artist that you love just right there being a normal guy smoking a blunt. No way. That's Equipto, fool. Like, that's a, you know when you turn to your homies like, look, 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 it's fucking Equipto. Look, look. We all finally get the balls to go walk to him. Hey, hey. Good show. He's like, oh, he's, he's mad cool. Says what's up to every one of us individually. Super fucking tight. Lost my fucking mind, guys. I literally, that moment made me just like a fan for the rest of my life. Boom, that was it. 12 o'clock, the show's over. We drive from Santa Cruz back to Merced. Just everyone screaming hype. We met a Quipto, fucking smoothie. He's a white dude. What the fuck's going on? Like, it was very cool. First Andre Nicotina show. It was just a great fucking time in life when Nicotina was killing it at the Catalyst. But after that, guys, we went to like three more Andre Nicotina shows that year. Literally, we just went every time he came, we got a fucking ticket. You trying to go, you trying to go? Yeah, let's go. So we went to like four shows within that one year, same artist, same concert, same, we just, we love the guy. So let's fast forward. About two years later, I go to a, let's just say my 10th show. Me and my sister are visiting my dad in Portland. My sister's into super punk shit, a lot of like, obscure ass fucking rock stuff. And I love the rockabilly shit. That shit's tight as fuck, but like the death core, horror core shit is tight as fuck. My sister tells me the necromantics, the fucking necromantics are coming to downtown Portland. It's just like a horror core, crazy, sick ass band. Go look them up. So we go to downtown Portland and at the time there was hell of those neo-Nazi fools beating people's asses. And me and my sister are pretty brown. She's way darker than I am. So we were kind of nervous because we took the train and then my dad was gonna pick us up. So we go to downtown Portland looking over our shoulders waiting to see some boots and leather jackets. Like, I'm gonna fucking run. We're running if we see some bald-headed motherfuckers. So we're at the show, it's just my sister and I. There's nothing but girls with big pinup hair and dudes with the dopest pompadours I've ever fucking seen. So we're standing there, my sister has a little Polaroid camera. She's like taking pictures and I'm just taking pictures of random shit of the show, you know, random stuff. So the end of the show comes and the fucking band starts coming out and like talking to people and my sister, I can see it on my sister's face. She's like, oh my God, oh my fucking God, I gotta get a picture. My sister's with the whole band of necromantics. All three dudes are standing there and my sister's like taking a picture and I snap it. I wasted all of her pictures and when I snapped it, it didn't take the picture. I felt so fucking bad. She was pissed. Anyway, after the show, we're standing outside waiting for my dad. Two fucking hours my dad took to get us. Two hours me and my sister like looking for bald heads, just waiting to get fucking stabbed up. Fast forward again, my next concert, 
Nicotina. We're gonna see Andre Nicotina again, uh, except it's with the Jacka. Andre Nicotina and the Jacka, it was so fucking tight. My first time ever seeing the Jacka live. I loved it. The next show after that, 18th birthday. On my 18th birthday, my sister got me concert tickets and she took me all the way to Selena's. At the time, dude, I was surprised my sister even did it because we were always fighting. We were always fucking fighting. She was being a dick and I was literally like, you wanna smoke weed? Fuck you! Like, oh my God. My sister got me Stevie B tickets. I don't know if you know who Stevie B is, but Stevie B is like an older singer from like the 80s and 90s, dope as fuck. I guarantee you, Google it after, you know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. So we go to this place in Selena's, it's like at a fairgrounds and there's like a bunch of 80s house music fucking artists. It's like a, a festival and it was so tight, but Stevie B was the headliner. I saw these two Mexican chicks beat the fuck out of each other in the row in front of us. So me and my sister having a great time. We're like, oh, he's been, oh shit, Stevie B. So it was cool as fuck. Saw a bunch of old artists, Stevie B played. It was, it was cool, man. I mean, my sister took me on my 18th birthday. The next show I went to, I was probably about 19. My uncle John, he loved this band called Tiger Army. I don't know where my uncle was, but me and my Aunt Pepper decided to go to the Tiger Army show in Fresno. Just me and her. Fuck it, how often do they play? So Tiger Army's rockabilly, like fucking hardcore music. It's sick as fuck. Anyway, we go to a show and you know, it's like in a warehouse. There's 500 people in a fucking 200 capacity spot. So everybody's touching like this. It's awful, but those are fucking rock shows. Those are like backyard rock shows. Fuck it, it was awesome. So we're standing there, my aunt's like drinking a beer. I wasn't of age, so I'm just standing there and I see this tweaker looking ass dude walk by me, but he's kind of small with long ass hair. He walks by me and I go, that motherfucker looked like Mike Vallely. If you don't know who Mike Vallely is, he's a pro skateboarder, he was in CKY and shit. 10 minutes later, the fucking guy gets on stage and starts singing. It was him, dude. Come to find out he has a fucking band and it was him. So I'm standing there looking at him like, holy shit. Fuck yeah. So the night's going on, Tiger Army finally comes on. The whole band walks right by me and my aunt because we're in the back. So they come through the back door and they walk right by us. You know when you see the concert, you see the artist and they're coming through the back. I love that feeling, bro. It's like I'm seeing a wrestler come out. Like, oh shit, here it comes. Tiger Army played. It was just me and my aunt. Super fun Tiger Army show in Fresno at some nasty ass warehouse, but fuck yeah, it was tight. Fast forward a couple months, I'm going to a Smoothie concert. I don't even know him at the time. I go to a Smoothie concert, and who is standing in the back while Smoothie's playing? In the back by himself having a drink. Fucking Andre Nicotina is in the back, like in the dark with his hat down, just taking it, just drinking, not on his phone, doing nothing, just drinking, watching the show. I know he's not a very approachable person. He doesn't seem like a friendly guy. I've heard stories like he's not too friendly, like in person when it comes to fan interaction and shit. But I went up to him and I'm like, yo, I'm a, I'm a really fucking big fan. Like I was, a, I'm like, I'm a big fucking fan. Do you think I get a picture with you? He didn't say shit, he just went, that's it, he went, didn't say a word. I went next to him, took a picture, he just posed, didn't change his face at all, and I just left, and I just, that was it. That's all I wanted, like, yo, no fucking way, bro. Yes, this was so long ago. This is before I ever took pictures, before I ever did anything, so I'm just like fanning the fuck out in my head. You know what I mean? Just like, I just mound drinking Tina. I've been at fucking 20 year shows, bro. I've been to so many of your fucking concerts. Thank you. You know what I mean? Like when you want to just thank him, thank you for the music, man. So I was 20 years old, the very next concert. I was 20 years old and I finally go to a show that I will remember for the rest of my life. I have never seen a live show that badass. If you have never been to a Tech 9 concert, you are missing out. I went to Tech 9 when he was still with Cut Calhoun and fucking Chris Calico and they were still a group. These guys were in synchronized dance moves like the Temptations, rapping the way they do. It was, it was the most incredible live show I've ever seen in my fucking life. Shout out to Tech 9 for putting in so much actual care in that show. Toward the end of the show, Tech 9 is uh, doing a, a new song release. Like, I'm gonna give you a piece of a song. Me and Jeebus, it's just me and Jeebus comes to the show. His first Tech 9 show too. The crowd at Tech 9 shows is one fucking army. They're an army. Everyone's looking, saying the same shit. It's fucking incredible for that energy is, whew. The Tech 9 starts rapping. He's just rapping. And like you see the fog machine by his feet and then it like a purple light. So it looks like purple clouds at his feet. And he starts rapping a little faster and then the smoke starts twirling a little slow. He starts rapping faster and the smoke starts twirling and they starts going faster, faster. And the smoke just starts and it 
formed around this fool like a tunnel as he's rapping. It was the most incredible shit I've ever seen in my life. The stage show, the light show. Guys, if you want to if you want to see some dope shit, when the world's back open, go to a Tech 9 concert. To give you a time frame, this is right when he signed Murs, Murs from Living Legends, right when Murs signed to Strange Music. That was Murs uh, first concert with Tech 9. I met Murs outside lost my shit. I'm a huge Living Legends fucking fan. And I met Murs when he had the crazy ass dreads, right? I got a fucking autograph and a picture. Next concert, go to a Tech 9 show a couple months later with Jeebus. We go to another show because like, fuck it, dude. Same show, same album tour. I don't give a fuck. Let's go. Great. Same thing. Dope as fuck. The next concert I go to is one of my favorite concerts ever. I can't even remember. I think I went by myself. I'm pretty positive I went to the show alone. My favorite rapper of all time, I don't give a fuck what anybody says, my personal favorite rapper is Slug from Atmosphere. So I went to an Atmosphere concert in Santa Cruz. I remember watching it. I, I sat at the very, very, very top. Smoke joints back to back and just watched this concert by myself. And it was so fucking fun. I loved every single moment of it. The very next show I went to, I went again by myself because I didn't give a fuck. I went to Berkeley, the Greek theater. I think it was Berkeley. You know, the Greek theater, like the big giant steps that shit was sick I saw atmosphere and this is when they started doing the live band it didn't have the same feel as like the hip-hop show but it was sick as fuck seeing live music you know what I mean he had a whole live band the only two atmosphere concerts I ever been to guys I fucking left and went there alone both times because I just said fuck it Fast forward about a year. The very next concert I went to was a MERS show. MERS from Living Legends that I just talked about. But if you've seen the story time, click this link, How I Met My Girlfriend. And for those of you that haven't heard the story, me and Rosie were best fucking friends. I was, I fucking liked her, I didn't want to tell her. She liked me, didn't want to tell me, and then we took a bunch of drugs and like, spilled our guts to each other and we've been together ever fucking since. That happened, we stayed up all night on drugs and I go, hey, tonight in Santa Cruz, a MERS show, do you want to go? And that was me and Rosie's first date ever. We went to a MERS concert, the same place, the Catalyst in Santa Cruz. Went to a MERS show, me and Rosie's first date, and then we've been dating since that day. The next show I go to, guys, is with Rosie and her best friend and her husband. Do you remember Paid Dues? Paid Dues, that big music festival thrown by MERS. So there's like 60 rappers and groups going, right? I'll give you a time frame. I heard Kendrick Lamar's coming to stage one at this time, and everyone rushed. I go, I don't know who Kendrick Lamar is. I've never heard that name in my life. And I just went to the Living Legends part. All the members were there, so I was losing my shit. This is when uh, Tyler the Creator just dropped that first Goblin album. It was when Odd Future was on stage. They were the headliners. Like they were the biggest fucking name there. You know, it has the list. Stage one at one o'clock is this guy, but at the same exact time at stage three might be another of your favorite rappers. So you got to choose. You know what I mean? You have to choose, or like, all right, let's watch half the set and let's run over there and let's watch that half of that set it was so fucking bad it's like scrolling through pandora or fucking spotify in person i see that brother ali is just standing if you don't know who brother ali is you're welcome again i had to we go up and i just asked for a fucking autograph i love brother ali so fucking much we're going through stages stages listen to bands listen to this wu-tang was there it, it was really fucking cool and then rosie me and her just started dating i only listen to underground I listen to underground music, not mainstream music. So if you're on the radio, if you're on MTV, I would not listen to you. This is back when I was a little hater when it came to music. I didn't realize just because you're on the radio doesn't mean you're a sellout or a commercial artist. Even underground artists make it big. So if you made it big, hey, you were probably underground at one point. And that's when I broke the cycle of like, I don't listen to the radio. Now, some of the radio shit's dope as fuck. And then you go back, you go back like, oh man, his first album was hard. I'm admittedly saying I used to be a fucking hater when it came to music, but that's a whole different fucking video topic I'll get into. The reason I bring that up is because I never heard of Kendrick Lamar. I didn't know who these other guys were. I didn't know who the guy was. Rosie goes, oh my God, Mac Miller's here. I go, I, I don't know who that is. I know who Mac Dre is. So we go to this fucking warehouse and the other side, he's got a whole wing of the fucking stadium to himself. They say, Mac Miller's coming to the stage. I just saw a stampede of motherfuckers screaming and rushing to the stage. And me, I'm just sitting back. I told Rosie, go ahead, go, go, go. I, I don't know who this is. I'm gonna stay back here. You And she was like with her homie. They ran up to the stage. I was in the very, very back of the stadium of the airport hangar. I sat there and watched this kid entertain a fucking stadium. He looks young as shit. Who is this motherfucker? Little do I know, some of those fools on stage are gonna be some of my best homies. Like I just hadn't met them yet. I left that show thinking that's a superstar. 
superstar. Whoever that fucking white kid is, is a superstar. He was so, he brought up all the fans on the stage at the end of the fucking set. And I mean, people were losing their minds. He's sitting there fucking saying hi to everyone. Fucking thumbs up and people. I'm like, who is this fucking kid? I'm by myself smoking joints. I'm like, who is this guy? Who's Mac Miller? This shit's hard as fuck. And then on the drive home, she put on Mac Miller and I've been a fan ever since. So guys, let's fast forward about a year. That's when I started doing Dope with Yola, started doing it, and then everything has changed since then. It's not the same anymore. Concerts have changed now. Now it's more of like, oh, that's my homie, I'm gonna go to his show. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a different, like, oh, you wanna come to my show? Like, fuck yeah, I wanna come to your show. Being backstage in concerts is half as fun as seeing it from the crowd. I'm just gonna let you know that right now. Being backstage, smoking, that shit's great, that shit's great. Once a concert starts, seeing this angle from the side of their face, you're supposed to watch from the fucking crowd. But after so long, I understand, like, no, I'm just gonna sit on the side, I'll watch, I'll smoke joints. It got to that point. Shout out to Justin, Q, Tree J, all the most dope people, every, I fucking love you guys. Guys, turned out to be some of my best homies. Like Justin, me and Justin Boyd, one of my best fucking friends. I love that fool so fucking much. So they're like, yo, come to the show. I was in Denver the first time I ever met Tree J, all the Mac Miller people. First time I ever met all those dudes, I was in Denver. I was doing the weed shit, we were just smoking. Go back right now and watch the Denver Cannabis Cup walkthrough video. That's the first time I ever hung out with any of those guys. I Ryan, DJ Afterthought, it's the first time I ever met them. Fast forward years later, DJ Afterthought is one of my fucking, Ryan's one of my best friends, bro. You, if you can go back and meet some of your best friends, like that first handshake, how crazy is it to think of like that? We go to the Mac Miller show, the green room, all, all I do is box it. You know what I'm saying? I come there, if you invite me to a concert, it better be fucking smoking friendly, because I fucking smoke out every green room I've ever been in. What a talented ass motherfucker, man. He was... Of, it's just sad. Put it this way, when I'm in my car, Mac Miller station is one of the few things I'm not skipping through. You know what I'm saying? Like, you'll go on the radio station, most popular, like, oh my God, click, click. And then Mac Miller, you can just let it run all fucking day. So that was the first like backstage show. And then from there, I met Johnny Shipes from uh, Smokers Club. The second time I went like backstage and chill with everybody was the Joey Badass show. That was when, when Denzel Curry, uh, and Mick Jenkins, I didn't know who Mick Jenkins was at the time, yelling out, water, drink water. I'm like, what? what's going on, drink more water? This is your slogan? And I know almost all of you know who the fuck Mick Jenkins is. What a badass artist. I didn't know who he was and I was just watching him just control this fucking crowd. And then Joey Badass came on and just kinda stopped the show. <laughs> that motherfucker is so badass. Oh my God, what a, gifted ass artists. We are so lucky to live in a in an era where music's so accessible. You, you know what I'm saying? Like I used to have to do LimeWire and Napster and all this bullshit, burn CDs and all that, all that trash. Now you can just scroll and find your your new favorite artist. And then the next show I went to, I went Smokers Club again, uh Method Man, Red Man. Red Man's a cool motherfucker, man. <laughs> Red Man's a funny ass dude. Just smoking it out it was with uh, JP from West Coast Cure. Shout out to JP. Next concert, one of my most favorite memories ever because it was like watching a, a Disney movie, guys. And I'll tell you, uh, you'll get what I mean at the end of the story. So Dizzy Wright, you guys know Dizzy Wright, the rapper. That's my homie. He's cool as shit. You could tell he needed it. I could tell you needed it. Uh, I'm in that video. Look at that guy with the giant joint. Yeah, that's me. You could see me. Go check it out on YouTube. Dizzy invited me to his concert at the Catalyst. I'm like, fuck yeah, I'll, I'll come through, roll the fuck up, we'll smoke it out. One of the only people I ever met, rappers, actors, that will not stop smoking. He has kept up with me in every single session, never bitched up, never fucking, oh, you know, I'm done. Nothing, that motherfucker will keep smoking all damn day. Box agreement, room, we're chilling. He goes on stage, the concert's sick. I'm just lighting joints, I'm on the side, we're lighting joints. It was a good time. After the show's over, you know, there's a bunch of fans outside, so he's like, he's outside of the door, like signing autographs and shit. The security guys bring stuff back into like the floor of the concert, you know, like, it doubles as a different place. It's not just always a concert venue, it's like a bar, dance hall. So they start putting some tables back, you know, where they go. Then these motherfuckers roll out a basketball court. You know, the ones you see in people's driveways? So there's like a basketball court there for the fucking workers or some shit during lunch. I have no idea. All these guys are on tour. They don't get to stop and play basketball. Dizzy's a basketball player. He loves basketball, so he's like, yo, Yo, who's got a fucking ball? We went from doing a concert, he's signing autographs, he sees the basketball court, we start playing a full game. We're in the middle of the Catalyst, guys. In the cat, you know what the Catalyst looks like? We're in the middle of the Catalyst, right where the 21 and up section is, right below that is where we put the hoop. We start, start playing 21. So it's Dizzy, me, I think DJ Hoppa, 
Freeze. There's like a couple of the opener dudes there, and there's like a couple of the dudes that work on the bus. We're all playing basketball against each other for two fucking hours. I have to drive back to Merced. I am drenched in sweat. I've been coming to this place my whole life. I'm with this fool, and I'm gonna play basketball in here. I'm playing. I don't care how sweaty I get. So we're all like getting competitive. It got it got serious, right? It got real serious. And there's still kids waiting outside trying to take pictures with him. There's a door in the back and there's a glass window. All you see is fans like with their phones, just recording with their phones through the window trying to get us playing basketball. The security guard lets in like 30 fans, right? They're all like right about 20 feet away inside of the venue, but like 20 feet away. So they're not really by us, but they're all right there. They're all filming. Everyone's just like, oh my fucking God. And Dizzy's over there trying to shake fools, fucking lays up. He's doing his last shot. He has 20. So, you know, you have to hit that one. If you don't hit that one, you go back to fucking, what is it? 15 or some shit. It's Dizzy's show. All these people are there to see him. We're all playing basketball. There's like 30 of his fans right there. He goes up to take his final shot to hopefully win, swishes it, all of his, I'm standing on the court, court, but it's a venue. I'm standing there, I'm looking at this ball go in, it goes in like a movie, bro. All of these dudes and these girls run up to him. He's jumping in the air like, yeah! They run up to him, grab him, they lift him up like a movie. They lift him up. This is not that tall of a dude. He's like my height. They lift this motherfucker up. He's on an ocean of his fans. Everybody's yelling, Dizzy, like a movie. And he's doing this. As they carry this motherfucker out of the venue to where the rest of the fans are waiting by the bus, they carry him out and he's looking back at us. What a way to win. That was like watching like Flubber or something. Like some Air Bud shit. What the fuck just happened? This was one of the funnest times I've ever had. When Mac Miller did the Good AM tour, I went to every single show in California because those are my friends. As soon as they're all from Pittsburgh. So when they come into California, it's like, yo, where you at? Let's chill. You know what I'm saying? Mac Miller, he wasn't smoking weed at the time. I'm over here, hey, what's up, Mac Miller? Oh, no, no, I'm not doing that shit. Like, I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. But Justin and Q and all them, those are like more of my friends. Like, I've met Mac many times. It's just, I'm not going to fan out. Like, yo, let me get a picture. That's not what I'm going to do. You know what I'm saying? I've been to the man's house. House, never once have I take a picture. So Justin and them, like when we chill, we're, we're chilling, we're having, we're having fun, we're hanging out. All we did the entire tour was just roll the fattest, most bomb. Jerm Jilla was with us. My homie Barbecue Biz was with us. A lot of my homies that I still chill with today were there. We just went on the tour, smoked out the fucking green room. That's all I did. I went on every tour and watched one of my favorite artists. Four or five concert dates in a row. Fast forward, I've been to so many Riff Raff shows backstage because my homie DJ Afterthought at the time was his manager, tour manager, I can't remember. I've been to so many concerts because DJ Afterthought, like all the backstage shit for the past like three years is because fucking Ryan. Backstage is not like, oh, bitches and liquor. No, hell no, motherfuckers got a job, dude. They got to perform. That shit might be after. I don't know. I never stay. I just go home. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I want to go fucking smoke weed with you guys and I'm out. And then it comes to the Smokers Club. The Smokers Club tour was fucking tight. So whenever these fools hit me up, I know like, okay, cool, fuck yeah, I'm gonna smoke out your whole backstage. <laughs> That's all I do every time. Like at the Smoke Dizza show, uh, the backstage, uh, we smoked, Ratchet Man and me and OG, we smoked it the fuck out. We had a two ounce joint. I love, I love making rappers not wanna smoke anymore. It's like playing baseball to some people. It's a sport to me. You wanna hit this? Oh, you're good? 14 minutes. Okay, I gotcha. So about four years ago, Johnny Shipes hits me up and says, hey, do you want to host the Smokers Club tour? This is before I ever talked on camera. I was just doing skits. I never did a story time. I've never done this. I was still super like, uh, I don't know if I want to do that. I I'm not good on camera. You know what I mean? I, I was still like, Oh fuck, with camera. So I co-hosted the Smokers Club tour with Cameron, G Erbo, uh, fuck, there was like five other fools on that tour. Uh, the Underachievers. So you guys ready for this next part of the story? 
it's uh, a pretty fucking embarrassing, honestly. So I told Johnny Shipes, yo, I'll do the Californias. I'll do all the California ones, but I'm not gonna go out of state with you guys. I, I can't go on tour, bro. I gotta do videos. I have a clothing company. I can't just leave. So I go do the Frisco tour. Great. I don't like to drink when I got shit to do. I smoke as much weed as I want because I can handle myself. But if I get shit faced drunk and I got shit to do, what if I forget? Then I'm gonna feel stupid and irresponsible. So I used to live across the street from the Staples Center and they were doing the one at the Novo, which is right at the Staples Center. So I said, oh, I live across the street. I make it shit faced at this concert because I can just walk home. I don't give a fuck. I roll about 20 joints and I'm walking through security and they will not let me in. I'm calling the tour managers like, yo, they won't let me in with my weed. Like, are you fucking kidding me? I am pretty fucking nice. I'm reasonable. I don't really get mad at people right away, especially strangers. I got fucking pissed. The Smokers Club Tour. Motherfucker, I am hosting this shit and you're not gonna let me in with the weed. It's called the Smokers Club Tour. You ain't getting in here with that weed, man. And you go give it to somebody else, they're not getting in either. They really were not trying to let me in. So what I did is I had Rosie go in, I went and handed her my joints and then I walked away and I went through the line. Somebody spotted me, they fucking tracked me down before I even got to the backstage, tracked Rosie down, kicked me the fuck out. So this cop is outside trying to lecture me on sneaking weed and that could have been a gun. Like, you know it's not a gun, you know it's weed, I'm hosting the shit, call the Smokers Club tour, that guy's smoking a blunt right there, it's California, I'm in LA, I'm fucking hosting the shit, let me in. Anyway, they would not let me in, the tour managers came out and they were like, he's hosting it. I'm gonna put this out, this is out, don't worry guys, <laughs> there's plenty more where that came from. <laughs> So what did I do guys? I'm looking at the cop, I go, you know what man, fuck you. I'm gonna go put the weed at my house. I live down the street, I'll be right the fuck back. So what I did was stash my weed in the fucking plaza of the Staples Center, Microsoft Center, in those bushes, you know, right there where the roller skating thing is, where the ice rink is. I put my weed, all my joints in the bush. They let me in, I went out the back door, came in, picked up my joints, put them in my pocket and walked right back in. I decide, oh, time to chug Hennessy. I'm pissed off, I live across the street, I'm gonna chug Hennessy, we're halfway into the show, fuck it. So I get shit faced. Everything's going good, I'm talking to this dude on the side of the stage. Here's the concert, the stage, here's the whole stage. Here's where the artist's performing. Here's where all their homies are on the side. You've been to a concert, I'm on the side of the stage, my back is now turned to the artist because they're playing music in between, you know, like the artist is not on stage or nothing like that. Nothing like that's going on. So we're in between artists and I just hear music playing. I'm talking to a dude like this, drunk. Remember, I'm fucking drunk, so I'm not really paying attention. All I hear is a Wiz Khalifa song playing and I'm like, okay, they're playing Wiz Khalifa. I'm talking to the guy and then I hear everybody cheering. I'm like, damn, they love this Wiz Khalifa song. Damn, you know when people play music, you're like, okay, when's the artist coming out? So I'm still talking to the dude and I notice the dude starts doing this. Like looking around me and I'm like, Motherfucker, in my head, I'm like, fool, I'm talking to you. I'm like, yo, what's going on? He goes, hey man, can I just watch this real quick? I go, what? Remember, it's been about 30 seconds, I'm drunk, all I hear is music. I turn around, and when I turn around, Wiz Khalifa's there. He showed up out of nowhere, and he's playing a song. And I had my back to the man for 30 fucking seconds, facing a joint, drunk as fuck. I turn around, I have never felt more rude in my whole life. I felt like I was talking while the teacher was trying to give a presentation. Like, you rude motherfucker. Can't you just turn around and, you know what I mean? Like, that's how I felt like, oh, oh my God, I feel so fucking rude. Oh my God, I'm hosting this shit. I felt so stupid, dude. I felt so rude. I just looked around like, I hope nobody saw me when my back t turned to the man. Like I didn't give a fuck, but I did give a fuck. I just felt really bad. So one of the most embarrassing times of my life, the one I didn't talk about, you guys have seen on Street Fights, where I had to fight two grown fucking men at the Tech 9 show and beat the shit out of that buff fucking redhead. So there's been a lot of concerts, man. And some of them I didn't say in here because they've been in other story times, like the fight story time. Go watch that shit. <laughs> My little brother likes Wi-Fi's funeral, and my homie DJ Afterthought is his tour manager, so I took him there backstage. You know my little brother, like, oh my god! The same feeling I had when I was a kid, and I saw a smoothie, I saw a Quipto, that same feeling I got to give my little brother when he's like, oh, taking a picture with his artist that he likes, like, I love that, that I could see, and I know exactly what he's feeling from that picture, like, oh, I've had that face.
It's so weird to think like, what's the last concert you went to? Right now, in the comments, before the world took a shit, what's the last live show you went to? I can't wait to see the fucking artist you guys put down. The last show I went to, guys, before the world stopped was Earth Gang, Mick Jenkins, JID, my homie Q, and DJ Afterthought again. Uh, they do the management, the tour management for them. I just smoked the fucking green room out. Like I said, that's all we really do, but that was the last concert I went to. I can't fucking wait for shows to come back. One thing that's got me really hyped, shout out to Shavo. My homie Shavo, dude, System of a Down, man. When System of a Down comes, they're doing a Europe tour, I promise you. I'm gonna go to a fucking show of theirs in Europe and I'm gonna smoke the whole fucking place out. If you do do music, keep that shit up. The world, I feel, is gonna come back soon. You'll be able to do concerts. I know everybody's struggling right now because they can't do live shows. We will all be back to normal soon, I feel, and uh, just be nice to each other. Help each other out when you can. Are you fucking kidding me? So I tilted that back too far. For someone that hits bongs every day, that was kind of a rookie mistake on my part. But I was really into the story, man. And now I just, at least it's clean. So that was the concert story time. Got way higher than I expected. I have so much shit to do today. I completely forgot about it. If you got the time in the comments, every single concert you've ever been to, write it out just like that. I'll do it too in the comments. Every single show I've ever fucking seen in my life. Coolest thing about music, dude, it can connect you with people right off the fucking bat. Right when this video is over, today is Friday. Right when this video is done, pushtrees.com will be live. So if you wanna grab gear, the rolling trays, you got new grinders, new shirts, everything, pushtrees.com. The second this video is over, the shit will be live. Before you get out of here, do me a favor, leave a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I hope this does not get age restricted. So if it's not age restricted, press the share button. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Storytime, Concerts Edition. We just hit 900,000 today. Today we hit 900,000 subscribers, holy fucking shit. By the way, I'm planning the million subscriber video. I have a really, really like, TV worthy idea and it's gonna be fucking incredible. I I'm gonna say it right now. It's gonna be fucking amazing. Uh, I'm already I'm already smiling and I know what every scene looks like in my head, how to cut it. I'm excited. So we have a lot coming up. The warehouse just got locked in. So the Dope As Usual podcast will be here in October, probably the first week of October. We're gonna start building out the set starting on the 21st. It's about to be dope as hell. We got the warehouse, we, everything's going. The new Push Trees drop is here podcast is coming so much good shit guys so this has been the concert story time thank you so much for watching as always until next time guys i'm dope as yola have a dope ass day i was trying my best not to drink any water this time <laughs>